Welcome to season two of No Shelf Control, the podcast with books, booze, and banter hosted by authors for readers, because let's face it, we are all bookworms at heart. Mm. This season, we'll be chatting about book to screen adaptations and trending book talk books. I am Lindsay Sparks. And I'm Lindsay Pope. Grab a cocktail, kick back, and enjoy the show. Okay, so uh, this is the ninth episode, I believe, of season two. And this episode, we are doing an adaptation. Yes. So welcome to our adaptation episode, everybody. We are featuring a book that we have both wanted to read for a very long time, mm -hmm. um, which is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. And um, I mean, I know we're going to talk a lot about the book and the show later, uh, So because it's an adaptation one. Um, but I mean, I just have to stay off the front. Like, I loved it. I loved both. <laughs> Well, this is going to be a fun episode because I actually could not stand either one of them. Really? <laughs> really. Oh, that's so exciting. <laughs> I know. I'm really excited too. I even was talking to one of our, re our mutual readers and um, she was asking, when is this, when is this episode going to air? Because I really want to know what you guys think. And I was like, I'm pretty sure we're going to be divided on this one. It's going to be a good one. What did she think? Did she like it? Mm-mm. Oh, that's great. Again, yeah, I know. And it's so, like, everything about this book is something that I wouldn't like. And I don't know why, but I was, like, the, so, like, my husband and I started the show months ago. He was not into it. He was, like, this is weird. And I was, like, I don't know. I kind of like it. I think he liked, I think it was the first episode that was very much, like, apocalypse. Mm -hmm. And then it's, like, the second episode is, like, post-apocalyptic stage play. <laughs> and he was, like, mm -hmm. nope. <laughs> it's definitely both of them are very quirky in a lot of ways yeah. so i can yeah. definitely yeah anyway we'll get more to that later yeah it's like gonna be interesting yeah oh it's gonna be fun um okay so anyway but most important question first what are you drinking mm -hmm. um so i just have Ooh. i have bubbles today and then i usually i usually don't have stems yeah i usually don't have a stem when i'm in here recording because i don't want it to get messed Aww. up but this is my beast charm I have a blue oh. and a beast, um, and so, but beast is the OG, right? So here's yeah. my beast cup. Cheers, beast. Glass. Cheers, beast. He's outside being um, really lazy in very hot heat. So <laughs> there we go. Cheers. Uh, well, I am drinking red wine. Shocker. Nice. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Yes, yes. Um, okay, so what are you working on right now? Um... <laughs> I feel like are I, you working right now I'll just twiddle my thumbs uh <laughs> no I am I actually have this week has been mostly um I, we I know we're working on some revisions for the Raven Queen but, mm -hmm. but my focus has mm -hmm. been getting back into um uh the... what is your book called yeah I can't even remember <laughs> I have so well and so I just got Sea of Storms which is my Norse you mm -hmm. know mythology retell like that's to the editor that was th on Sunday so that's gone which feels really great I'm so excited for that um as you know it's had many renditions adding like a whole male POV yeah. and all these things so I'm really excited for that one um and so that one's to the editor. And then I've been kind of putting uh, the third book, which is a Snow White and the Huntsman retelling. It's a Norse retelling uh, on the hold, why I've been working on the Raven Queen. So the Raven Queen is pretty much at the point where we're ready to send it to beta. So yeah. I've been able to take a step back from that. So that feels really good too, uh, which is really fun because it's different than anything that I think we're both working on, like mm -hmm. on our own. So it's been like a nice little palate cleansing project. Um, but anyway, so I'm finally diving back in. And so it's really fun because I'm getting to kind of, it's tying in, and I talked about this before, but it's tying in a lot of little things that are like nuanced throughout the first two books in the series, because mm -hmm. they're all standalones. But um, it's fun because this one is Snow White and the Huntsman, but the Huntsman has seven horsemen. And so it's been really fun to kind of delve into them and like, get, you know, do the little yeah. like seven dwarfs and all that and stuff. Yeah. And it's anyways, it's been really fun. Um, and yeah, so I'm just, this is my first week kind of being back in that. And so I'm like doing a lot of castle research and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that's fun. And obviously, you know, it's kind of weird because we're working on this like historical fantasy dystopian, whatever we want to call it on <laughs> like what we're doing together. So I'm really, I'm having a hard time because I'm like, okay, wait, 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 we just 
kind of did something like that so I need to rethink like I don't want anything to be too similar yeah you know? so I'm kind of in like a little weird in between but other than that um that's been my focus so that's what I'm doing what about you um so I am also working on <laughs> the Raven Queen revisions but like you said that's like end stages pre-beta like yeah it's not where my creative like mental focus is it's more yeah. just like looking at the lines and being like Bleh. yeah so um I have been writing um I wrote The Last Vampire Queen episode five the last couple days I am finishing up uh, my patron that's for my patreon serial um I'm finishing up my patron's choice story which is actually really exciting so when they picked this one because my patrons um ha have a poll each month where they first get to like tell me all their ideas of stories mm -hmm. that they would want me to write and then I put them all on a poll and they get to pick and whichever one gets the most votes is the one that I write and so I'm writing about a character who is a villain so it's set um he's a villain in uh the Echo Trilogy sort of mostly he's a villain he's the villain but it's it's like a very ambiguous <laughs> as to why <laughs> I mean you've okay. read it um He's the villain, but he's not really the villain. He's possessed by the villain. I don't know. Anyway, so it's set, um, and it's during the first chapter. It's his point of view for the first chapter of Time Anomaly, which is the second book, which is like the one moment until the end when he is himself. And so it's really cool. So we get to see, we actually get to see what it's like to be him, which is not great, but it's a really fun story. So that's been really fun and then I'm gonna dive straight into I'm gonna try to write a couple episodes of the Nick Chronicles which is my other Patreon serial because after that I'm starting the second Fateless Trilogy book and I would like to not have to stop for anything so I want to make sure I get all my Patreon stuff um ready for the next couple months and then I can just like go full steam nice into darkness between the stars because i already know that's ancient oh i forgot about the title yeah. that we came up with together yeah wait, i know wait. wait do we get to can you remind us what the third one is too or no i haven't revealed that one yet oh okay i um, mean i'm i should i can remember i can remind you i'm sure you're gonna go okay. somewhere oh i'm sure yeah don't worry about it <laughs> um yeah, but I they all have stars in the title. Yes, I do remember that. I do. Um, yeah, but I'm really excited to get back to that one. I am excited to um, re-listen to my playlist for Song of Scarabs and Fallen Stars and start getting back into that, um, like, mindset. Uh, start adding new songs to that playlist. I've actually already added a couple songs. Um, that have popped up while I've been building. I have so many, too many, too many irons in the fire, too many, I'm juggling too many stories right now. But I will see, I think the only reason that I'm able to do it and keep them straight and make them seem different is because of the playlists. Because like each playlist is very different. Um, but like, and there's no crossover songs. So when I, and I only put songs on there that, make me think of something specific for that series so yeah yeah I did actually um I was going into my email to get the link for our recording tonight and I did have an Amazon new you should check out blood of the broken oh only $4.99 <laughs> yay 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 <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I'm really happy with how that one's been doing too. So Blood of the Broken came out a couple weeks ago. I think it, it's been out since we've recorded since one. it's been out. Yeah, I think so. Oh yeah. Cause I think I might've asked you. It's hard. Cause we also meet separately. We, we meet, we meet separately them? ourselves. And then we also meet with a group of with authors group, yeah. and it's like, I don't know who I tell stuff to. Yeah, I know. I, am. <laughs> I actually had another meeting with some friends today and I was like, wait, do you know this author? Wait, <laughs> <laughs> this, need, like, you should talk to them oh wait you don't okay I'll introduce you because you should talk to them about x y and z because I can't remember <laughs> who the hell knows you anymore no that's funny anyway um yeah so I don't know working on too much doing a bunch of cover stuff you know a bunch mm -hmm. of like artsy stuff mm -hmm. I don't know Max. I feel you I feel you I know I was thinking I had one of my I do not sleep well uh which you know mm. but um 
I've been the last couple of nights. Um, I've been waking up. It's so funny. I like, I don't know if this ever happens to you, but I was, I felt felt asleep. I felt I fell asleep at like I felt like I was asleep. <laughs> well, no, I felt like I was asleep for like five <laughs> hours, but I had apparently only been asleep for an hour because I went to sleep at like ten something. I woke up at eleven something, and then I couldn't sleep until three thirty this morning. Ugh. I worked for like an hour. But then I was just like, I'm tired. Like, I just want to sleep. Like, I, so I was just laying in bed, like, oh my God, I can't wait. Go to sleep, go to so sleep. So anyways, while sleep. I was, yeah. So while I was laying in bed, not sleeping um, and not working because I was too tired. Because I was like, oh, there's tons I can do. Like, if I'm going to be awake for four hours, I might as well yeah. just work. But um, there's always that hopeful part of you that's like, maybe yes. I'll sleep in the next five minutes. I feel like Dennis thinks I'm crazy. I think he turns over probably when, because this happens a lot. The time, the times change a lot. Usually I wake up at like 2.30 or 3 and then I'm up until 5 when he goes to work. And then I'm like, mm-hmm. oh my God, I'm so tired, but I have to get up. Um, but I feel like he wakes up seven times and he just looks at me like, why are you awake still? Like, this is it's not by choice. <laughs> I just think he, he gets probably so confused because I never sleep in his mind. <laughs> like he opens his eyes and I'm sitting there just You guys are like him. opposites. You I can't know. go to sleep. And he's he like, he conks out. He can't yeah. stay awake. <laughs> Yeah, it really, it, it, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I, one of the things that I was thinking last night or this morning or whatever you want to call it when I couldn't sleep was I was thinking about, oh, you know, the maps that we need to do, mm-hmm. you know, all those things. And I was like, I could get up and do it now. But like, but I want to sleep. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Yeah. At least when it's like a child that keeps me up, I'm up listening to them go to like be crying. So I'm like, I can't sleep. I'm not gonna be able to sleep until I stop crying. I'm gonna have to keep going up and checking it or getting up and checking on them. So I'm like, I might as well do something. You know what? It's funny. I kind of think about moms when I'm awake and um a lot because Dennis he does a lot of self soothing. Like he hums in his sleep, and I was kids totally do that. Yeah, yeah. It's so funny. Yeah. (laughs) My kids talk to themselves, Mm -hmm. or like I don't know what who they're talking to. They're talking about their stuffed they'll talk to their be like holding their stuffed animals and like talking to them I can see them on the monitors it's pretty funny yeah I don't know. anyway sorry but yeah so um I think what I'm saying is my my husband is like a child who needs children when you have a husband <laughs> <laughs> he likes to laugh when you say fart and all those things yeah, <laughs> well just buzzing anyway right. move it over there um okay so uh what are you reading right now so I kind of was saying that I feel like I was reading station 11 for a long time um I'm just diving into um things we never got over by Lucy Scores this is gonna be my second book by her I really loved her first book she's an Um, indie right yes she's a very um successful indie author and uh she does like rom-com but it's a lot deeper than that uh she's a really good writer and she has really long books which I always appreciate because I think a lot of romance authors skimp with like oh 60,000 words you know Mm. I'm like oh no (laughs) she's straight up like writes 500 page books um but anyway uh we picked we (laughs) we were doing some pretty um deep reading for book club so we wanted to pick something that was a little you know a little more fun so a little more levity to the group so we're I'm just starting that so things we never got over I'm like I said I've only read one of Lucy Scores books but I'll let you guys know how it is um I generally really like her stuff and um so I'm a really big fan of Adrian Young's Sky in the Deep which is historical fantasy it's very Mm. Viking-esque I just finished listening to that um before we started this book that we're talking about right now and um it was probably my I think it's my third time listening to it I really enjoy it but I've never listened to or read anything else by her that I like really got sucked into so I wanted to dive into book two in that series which is the girl the sea gave back it's also very historical fantasy viking-esque again because it is the second book in the series which I'm not loving so I'll keep is it a continuation series or it's a different story no, it's um, it's the same world, uh, a different clan. Um, the thing that this is actually kind of ties into what I had a really hard time with in the book that we just read mm. is, so it has two POVs. It has, um, I think his name's Har Harv. Anyway, anyway, there's two POVs that I need to get back to it. And obviously, I forgot. 
but I think her name's Tora. And then there's a, there's a male POV. So two POVs and it's first person present, but randomly throughout the chapters, it goes back to past tense, third person in their Hmm. histories. And that really messes with my head. Like, I don't, I'm having a hard time with that. So I'm only halfway through that, maybe not even quite that far. So I'm going to get through it because, I mean, she's a beautiful writer. So are you reading, to, what, how, what format are you reading? This is, uh, it's uh, Audible. Oh, okay. So, it, but it goes back to kind of what we were talking about with Madeline Miller, how she has really beautiful prose. She's a beautiful writer. Mm-hmm. So I really, like, she's, it's not her, it's not her writing per se, because I love the first book in the series, but she went in a very different direction with this one as far as how she was portraying the story. And I'm having a hard time with that. So anyways, we'll see how it goes. But, um, can you tell me the title of that again? Yeah, I think it's The Girl uh, the Sea Gave Back, and it's by Adrian Young. And uh, like I said, beautiful prose, really rich history, great world building, a um, lot of mythology, but it's just this the method of storytelling is hard for me to really yeah. root myself in. So anyway, how about you? Uh, I am, I have been wanting to reread one of my favorite series for a really long time. And I say reread it, it's not finished, but it's super long. And I was just feeling like I needed like a comfort, a Mm -hmm. comfort, a super long comfort read, especially because I have been in a creation phase without a break for several months now. (laughs) And I usually give myself a break, but we dove straight into mm-hmm. the Raven Queen, and then I'm driving straight into Darkness Between the Stars. So it's going to really end up being like a six month no break creation period. And my brain is too full of my own stories. So as I yeah. as I feel like I've talked about before, I have a hard time differentiating between story worlds, especially mm-hmm. when somebody else's worlds come into my head. This is a world I'm very familiar with, so it just makes it easier. Yeah, um, so I'm reading Dead Witch Walking, which is the first book in the Hollow series by comparison. I'm almost done with it. I mean, <laughs> I started it a couple days ago and I've just been having it on. I'm just like, oh, yeah. this is like, it's like an old friend. <laughs> so yeah, no, I totally get that. I think that's why I listened to the um, Sky in the Deep for like the third time because I knew I liked it and I know the story and mm-hmm. I would, we already have to read and I'm in a book club so I have to read specific things so it's Mm -hmm. really nice to be able to just read something in between that is like a palette like I already know what's gonna happen I already know I enjoy it like you know like I totally get it I totally yeah yeah and everything I was like I read everything I read stuff for the podcast obviously and then I was was reading stuff for research which was a bunch of um reverse harem stuff Mm -hmm. And I feel like I've got a grasp on that. And I just want to read. I wanted research day. (laughs) Oh, that's what she said. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my Atlanta. Uh, I mean, I still have a bunch of reverse harem books that I need to read um, that I haven't read that I will eventually read. Um, But uh, yeah, I I don't, I don't want to, I don't know. I'm really enjoying my reverse, my reverse harem story. So I don't want to, you know, twist it with some, some other yeah. stuff. So anyway, um, yeah, so I'm, and that's like a, I don't know, 16 book series now at this point. So I'm just going to keep, just going to go through it. There's two books out that I haven't read yet. So I'm nice. really excited about getting to those. Cause this was a really interesting series. Kim Harrison, um, I think it was at like book 13, I think it's called Ever After. Um, that was like the final book. It was supposed to be the final book in the series. And then like four years later, all of a sudden it was like, there's another book. And then there's been like two more books since then. So it's like a full, it's almost like. I feel like J.R. Ward does that too. Yeah. It's, it, it, and uh, I, I feel like Karen Marie Monning has done that with the Fever series where it's like mm. one story arc, one long story arc comes to an end. And it's like, she takes a moment this is Kim Harrison I'm talking about now. <laughs> she takes a moment and she's like, because hmm. that 13 books, I'm pretty sure it's 13 books. I know, it feels like it arc. should be the like, end, right? <laughs> it, but, but it was great. And I was so excited when she was doing another one. And the the I read the first one of the new restart. And I was like, she actually had to like, re. it was like the epilogue that was on the final book. She kind of had to like backtrack on. And like, I think she turned it into a dream or something. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I'm really excited. 
Nice. I love this series. I love this. This series is so good. It's urban fantasy. It is all time favorite. It is. Um, I had to the first time I read this, I had to stop reading it. At, I think it's either book four or five because there's this big thing that happens, and it like broke my heart. She like tore my heart out of my chest and like stomped on it and like stabbed it a bunch of times. And, and then she like the, and she's like sucker. Yeah, and then like <laughs> the entire next book is just like the grief and fallout from that thing that happened and it's just like painful it's painful to read but it's like so good she does such a good job but it's gonna be really hard like I've read it since then I've read it since knowing what happens I've reread it and it still is gonna like leading up to it I'm just gonna be like what and I got Mandy to read it my assistant and she was like, I did not think that this was going to happen. And she was really mad at me. Well, I like, well, yeah, I guess that's good writing for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. And this series, I'm just going to keep talking about it because it's so amazing. I want everyone to read it. Now I'm getting sweaty because it's hot in my office. So, so sorry if I'm shiny. But um, it has like one of the greatest long, oh, super long. Slow burn arcs. Slow burn arcs. Okay, you're going to go right fully enemies to lovers and it is so good it's so That's good exciting. yeah I love it I know well, I tried to get you to read it before but you wouldn't do it or you tried it and you weren't into it I don't know okay. actually if I've read that one uh I read the care I read uh moaning I read that one the fever series mm -hmm. I read like one or two books of that I don't think I read the Kim Harrison books I think the hard thing with the fever series dark fever is the first one is that in the first book and kind of in the second book the main character is super annoying. Mm, I remember. She's kind of like Valley Girl-esque. Right? Yes. Yeah, I remember. She's, she's Southern, but she's Literally all about like... Stuck with... No, if it, it's not against Southern people. She is like the stereotypical like girly girl, but she's also super like narcissistic and I don't know. She's a very... But she grows. There's an amazing character yeah. growth arc in that series. Um, Yeah. All right. Well, there's 13 books I'll have to see when I can, or 14 now. I'll have to see uh, what my investment. Yeah, we'll <laughs> see one day. But the audiobooks are great. I think it's the same narrator the whole time. That's good. That's yeah. rare is what that is. Yeah. And that series has an amazing cast of, um, like, side characters. She does, it's an amazing group of side characters. They're awesome. They're so fleshed out. So, yeah. Anyway, talked like for 15 minutes about that. Uh, <laughs> we are not affiliates. No. <laughs> <laughs> but you should read it. Um, so uh, before we started recording, we were also talking about something that uh, I think we should talk about, which is because we're both, we both had a lot to say about this. So what are you yeah. watching right now? <laughs> um, well, uh... It's funny because you know me, like, I feel like you guys always have a show you're watching and mm -hmm. I feel like I always, I don't watch a lot of TV. So I kind of go through these, you know, mm -hmm. um, so right now we're watching evil, which, which is, is so good, which I is hilarious because my husband <laughs> loves scary shows and movies, but he's terrified of them. <laughs> so like we watch them and then he leaves all the lights on in the house. <laughs> So, anyways, we are on season two of that, um, and I know uh, Lindsay uh, Sparks really enjoys that, too, so we were kind of talking about that, because um, we got into it when it was on Netflix a couple years mm -hmm. ago, and now it's not on there anymore. You know, everyone's moving around, going yeah. to their own streaming services, so I finally found it on Paramount+. Plus. So, we were two seasons behind, so we've been trying to catch up after watching the um station 11 so anyways it's a fucking mind fuck is what it is but it anyway, is and i'm interested to see where it goes we're only in season two so. yeah and the, i i feel like this show is such a like dark horse show because it's not like super crazy popular and i don't understand why because i think it's amazing and the first season is so brilliant in the way that you don't know if it's real or not what's going on or if mm -hmm. any of it is if it's all psychological and like Everything could be explained away, but you're like, but maybe this, it can't all be yeah. coincidence. And then in the second season, it gets more into stuff. But I will say, and we talked about this a bit before we started recording, but I want to say it on air, which is that that show has the scariest hour of television that I have ever seen as a TV show. And this is including The Haunting of Hill House. Really? Mm. See, I feel differently, but... 
Although that think, whole I like think, basement think, scene in the Haunting of Hill House was super freaky. I think Dennis would agree with you, but I think Haunting of Hill House was more. Oh my god, we have very different definitions though. So yeah, and I can't remember what the episode is called. I know you just watched it. It's the elevator episode. It's in season two. I think it's called the elevator. <laughs> it's or something freaky. It mm-hmm. is, and and I think that. The thing that makes it so scary is that the whole time you're like, wait, is this real? Is this real? Is this real? And then at the end, they throw this thing in there and you're just like, what? So I think, so this is something that I think is really interesting. I'm going to pull out my psychologist hat here, um, which I don't have, let's be clear. Um, This is just that, this is just like a barely half a glass of (laughs) bubbles talking. Um, But you guys both have sleep paralysis so yeah. i think your idea of scary is a lot different than maybe some people's too uh yeah that's true that's interesting yeah. but i mean so funny you i mean i'm not that. saying it's not creepy it is creepy i'm not saying well, it's not but yeah but i mean it but it is funny because like sleep paralysis appears in this show and it also appeared in the haunting of hill house um yeah anyways just that's yeah. why I'm like, Dennis, why do you like watching the scary stuff if you like know you're just gonna go and like have some horrible interaction like when you're real? Yeah. Oh my god, I do this. Thing. I know. So, meanwhile, I'm just laying there like trying to sleep and I'm like, oh. <laughs> He's like, there's ch- there's children, they're whispering in the other room. And we don't have <laughs> children, so yeah, that's yeah. terrifying in the middle of the night. Uh yeah. Audi- the auditory hallucinations. Yeah, I'm just hallucinations like, oh, are my terrible. Atlanta. Yeah. Anyways, um, but yeah, um, but anyway, so we're watching that. We just finished, obviously, what we're going to be talking about tonight. And then um, 1883, I think I talked about it last time, mm-hmm. hands down, one of the best shows I've ever seen on television. Oh. I don't think I've ever had more feels, even watching a movie, maybe, to be honest. Like, I think the acting was so good. So there you go. Uh-huh. That's my two cents. Okay, well, I have three shows. So it's, and my husband has just been, like, on a roll with picking shows lately. So um, Blackbird. Blackbird is amazing. It has, I think, uh, I think you say his name is not you say, but like his name is pronounced Taron Egerton or something like that. He was in The Kingsman. Um, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay, I know what you're talking about the British guy. Yeah, he's, he's like, like kind of little British guy. Um, but he, uh, he's like the main character in this. Anyway, it's great. It's like a he gets arrested. He gets a chance to like exonerate himself by. Oh yes. Is by, this a movie or a show? It's a show. It's a miniseries by catching a serial killer or by getting a serial killer to give up his secrets or something mm-hmm. like that. It's so good. Um, so that's Blackbird. And then we watched Slow Horses, which is like a British spy show. It has um I'm not gonna think of anybody's name right now, but it's amazing. It's an amazing cast. It's so good. Highly, highly recommend. And it, there's only one season out, but there's gonna be at least four. Um, and then the one that we're watching right now. God, what is it called? And now I'm not gonna be able to remember. House of the it. Dragon. No, we're not. No, he doesn't watch Game of Thrones. I, I'm watching it. I'm only sorry. Well, but I mean, he never watched Game of Thrones. I He's know Dennis it, like... is totally anti. He will never watch yeah. it because everyone likes it. <laughs> yeah. It's like that. Um, oh my gosh, this is gonna drive me nuts. It oh Goliath. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got Billy Bob Thornton. It's so good. <laughs> it's a lawyer. It's like a nice lawyer going like small lawyer going against big corporation kind of thing. Oh my that gosh, it's good. so good. And he's also like a super alcoholic. Uh, it's great, dude. He always plays an alcoholic. Well, I mean, addict. like, to be honest, we've been saying, like, somebody wrote this story with him in mind. Like, it's, this is Billy Bob Thornton as lawyer. Nice. <laughs> it's like, what would they have done if he didn't want the role? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he helped write I don't know. Um. Anyway, so, yeah, I would recommend all of those, which is weird because there's, like, no fantasy or anything in any of them, so. That's okay. Yeah. Sometimes it's really fun. There's a show on Netflix, a new show called Echoes that I really want to watch um about this woman and if anybody has seen this tell us if you like it because it looks really intriguing it's about a woman who has a twin and i don't know exactly what happens but i think the twin goes missing and then she's trying to figure out what happened to her sister so she like poses as her sister and comes back and i'm pretty sure that that sounds exactly like the premise of a show that sarah michelle geller was in like five years ago oh yeah i don't know anyways um I thought I, that might be my next one. But, you know, it's hard because C is starting. 
on um, Apple TV and uh, the new, I'm, I'm watching the new um, House of the Dragon. And I'm mm. also tonight, no, tomorrow starts a new Lord of the Rings show on Amazon Prime. I just How is Kayla. House of the Dragon? It's interesting. It's good. Is it? I mean, yeah, so far. I mean, I'm intrigued. I'm not like swooning or anything, but yeah. it's good got my attention um but i love that stuff so yeah. i mean dennis could dennis is like oh whatever yeah. <laughs> you know but i would get excited so. huh. yeah i keep seeing like ads for it and stuff yeah um but anyway we should probably move on to the book i, guess, I know at this point yeah sorry guys <laughs> <laughs> um okay so i'm gonna read the description so this is for your hot two yeah, well, I as I was saying, well, I'm in triple digits here in Napa, California. So I'm yeah. like, oh my God. And I had to turn my fan off. So yeah. let's do this. I was just about to put my hair up. Maybe I'll do that. I don't, don't have any. Don't money. Um, All right. Okay, so uh, this is for Station Eleven. This is the description for the book. I just grabbed it off of Amazon. This is skipping over all the like paragraph of awards at the beginning of the description. <laughs> because I didn't need to read that. So no, please don't. <laughs> um, okay, so Kristen Raymond. Oh, did you listen to the audiobook? Yes. Okay. Kristen Raymond will never forget the night Arthur Leander, the famous Hollywood actor, had a heart attack on stage during a production of King Lear. That was the night when a devastating flu pandemic arrived in the city, and within weeks, civil civilization as we know it came to an end. Twenty years later, Kristen moves between the settlements of the altered world with a small troupe of actors and musicians. They call themselves the Traveling Symphony, and they have dedicated themselves to keeping the remnants of art and humanity alive. But when they arrive in St. Deborah by the water, they encounter a violent prophet who will threaten the tiny band's existence. And as the story takes off, moving back and forth in time and vividly depicting life before and after the pandemic, the strange twist of fate that connects them all will be revealed. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. Spoilers, everybody. Spoiler. Oh, yeah. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Book and spoil show. Everything. <laughs> everything. Um, yeah. So uh, what order did you watch slash read and what format did you read? So I had started watching this show months ago before we had decided we were going to read it. Um, I only made it to episode two or three because I wasn't super into it um mm -hmm. and then we decided to read it so obviously I can you know I made sure to try and um listen slash read it as much as I could before I started running out of time and I started watching it because I need to be prepared for the podcast so I went ahead I started watching it took a break read as much as I possibly could or listened as much as I possibly could and then yesterday I finished the show um, and then I had like an hour left today to mm -hmm. um, listen to it. Um, so kind of back and forth, really. But that would be confusing. Yeah. I mean, I didn't really have a choice. So yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. How about you? I watched, I, I want to say two episodes. Like I said, my husband wasn't into it. Um, and then we stopped and I was like, well, I'm going to continue it. But then I just never had time yeah um so then for the podcast I listened to the audiobook and then uh I watched the rest of the show yeah I feel like our husbands have very similar tastes in shows <laughs> yeah <laughs> um although I will say that my husband was like oh this is a great movie you should totally watch it and it was the devil's rejects and I do not recommend that movie for anybody oh I don't know if I've seen that one it's a Rob Zombie. oh yeah I don't I don't know if he would either but that yeah none of the, all of those movies are weird all the Rob Zombie movies it's are like the second movie apparently the first one is House of a Thousand Corpses mm -hmm. have you seen that yeah I, I didn't like that. any of them I didn't like any of them. yeah oh yeah so have you seen the Devil's Rejects I think I have but it was years ago and I clearly forgot about it for a reason yeah I was just like <laughs> looking at my husband like you seriously think this is a good movie like that's hilarious yeah I don't know so anyway I say he was on like a hot streak for picking shows but that movie was a bad choice God. <laughs> I don't like body horror I think uh, that's the thing I don't like body horror and this was very like body horror like yeah 
and just like to it like there was like a lot of like glorified rape kind of stuff i was just like this is not well all the rob zombie movies are off the rails a little bit i think yeah i feel like a lot of it, it, yeah anyway yeah That's sorry if you really like that movie <laughs> moving on just not into it's okay a lot of people love quentin tarantino movies and i cannot stand them so you can throw stones at me everybody it's okay yeah <laughs> i'm not super into them <laughs> either <laughs> anyway okay um, but yeah so that's the okay so we both kind of we kind of went back both of us kind of started with the show and then went into the book yeah went into the book and then came back to the show um okay so like you said you said you didn't like you didn't like either of them I really liked both you didn't like either mm -mm. interesting I know it's that really exciting um I think for me it's so strange because I know it's like an it's like an international best selling yeah. like really famous book. So I think for me, um, it had to do with you know I don't do well with stories that time hop and jump all over I the know. place. I do not like that at all. Um, and I felt like this book was told in riddles, and I didn't like that either. Um, yeah. I feel like I kept wondering. Did I miss something? Because it's multiple POVs. It's very topical third person. There's like nobody yeah. to really like yeah. hone in on and really. I know. That's like, why I'm saying it's so weird that for... I liked it so much. This is yeah, not just, my like. I just had a hard time. Like I just honestly, if we weren't, if I didn't have to finish it for the podcast, I would not have finished it, it either. You enough the crap out of that book. Yeah, I really would have. <laughs> um, and so, and I'm not like. People who love, like, a, everybody, a lot of people loved it. Like, I'm not, you know, it, it is what it is. But I just, it wasn't for me. And I think it's because I connected to no characters whatsoever. Yeah. And I did, had zero buy-in. And it was too messy for me. Like, I, again, I felt like I was very much trying to figure out a riddle the whole time. Yeah. I feel like the idea of the storytelling, of having everybody connected to Arthur, like, it's really cool in a way. And I feel like if it was maybe told differently, I would have really enjoyed it. I really yeah. would have liked how it would all tie in, but I just, it, it was hard for me. So that's, me. so it's so interesting that you say that I felt like, I felt like the author was like anticipating what I wanted to hear next. So like each time, each new chapter, like I, especially at the end. And I was like, God, I really want to hear Arthur's perspective. Like what, cause everybody's talking about Arthur and I just want to know like what his, and then the next chapter was like Arthur. <laughs> I was like, this is that's just, cool. Yeah, yeah, that's good. So I felt like the whole time I was like, I, I would be wondering as a chapter would be going on. I, I would be wondering like, hmm, I wonder, I wonder if she's ever going to tell us about this. And then the next chapter, it would be like telling us about that. And so I felt like, I don't know, yeah. maybe it was just I was the right person for, like I was who she was writing to or something. Which is funny because yeah. like I mean, I said, not third person. I'm not into third person. I'm not into super into multiple POVs. So I don't know. It just, it fit my brain maybe. Yeah. No, like I said, you're a lot of people enjoyed the story. So, I mean, it's yeah. not like you're in a minority. I probably yeah. am actually, but I think for me too, um, it's weird because they picked, she picked a very unlikable character to be the center of everything. So yeah. that was another part of it. Like, I felt like he had very few redeeming qualities, like sort of at the end, he was yeah. like, I'll just give all my money and pay off her loan for her whatever. But yeah. Like, he's not a good person, so... No, yeah. There there was not even, like, even the central hub of everything was just, it was nothing to, for me, it was nothing to look forward to, you know? Yeah. As far as the book goes, um, I, if I had to choose between the two, I enjoyed this, the show more, which we'll obviously talk about more. Yeah, I'm just adding one, one thing, one thing I want to talk about in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> talking about husbands and shows Dennis would sit down with me and I would try and explain like catch him up on what's going on I was like I don't care <laughs> okay <laughs> and moving yeah. on that's me when I go in like I'm sure right now my husband is watching the wire and he tries to tell me what's going on and I'm just like oh, I don't care it's like Dennis trying to tell me how to like put an engine together I'm like I don't know what you're saying and I don't care yeah <laughs> okay um okay so uh this story was a very unique take on the post-apocalyptic genre. Um, and I think that a big part of that for me was the fact that there were like no soldiers or there was no like, it was like normal people. fighters. Or, yeah, yeah. It was just like normal people. I yeah, mean, a lot of them I were like artistic, even the people you would not expect to be surviving, you know? Yeah. 
Um, but did did anything, even though you didn't really enjoy it, did, right. did anything stand out to you as especially unique or interesting or different for the genre? Yeah, Being someone sure. who even writes in the genre. Yeah, no, I think it's, it is really interesting because like you said, there are no, like, there are no soldiers. It's not like there's an army involved. There's a mm-hmm. militia, whatever. What's really interesting is they kind of skip over all of that. Like, it's quite literally like a few different people and them in the moment, but again, it's back and forth, but, and then 15 years, 20 years later, mm-hmm. there isn't a lot of in between. So you don't see any of that. You don't really see what's happening in the rest of the world. You only know what's happening in these hubs of people, which I think is really interesting. Yeah. Um, and a lot of their experience is based on where they were obviously like trying, you know, where it happened. Right. And then I think the other thing that's really interesting is that it really focuses on the arts in general and how it brings everyone together in the end. And everybody like tries to grasp onto well, not everybody tries to grasp onto what was before, but <laughs> if we think about the prophet and all that, like, yeah, there is no before. Gen- yeah. But in general, um, like they're like, that's kind of what draws everyone together, right? Is this traveling symphony and mm-hmm. the actors and stuff. So um, that, I think that's a really new, really creative spin on it. And I think for me, that's why I was saying before, it's like, I feel like if the story would have been told differently, I could have really been interested in it, but it was just kind of a hodgepodge to me. So it was hard. Yeah. So, but yeah, I really, I really like the idea of like focusing on that. Like what would it be like in 15 years? And if you are an actor, what do you do? Like what, what do you do at the end of the world? You know, yeah. I thought that whole idea of that whole museum and like having the random things from the past, like yeah. who would think to save that shit and have an actual museum you know like, yeah. I mean obviously somebody would but yeah it wouldn't have been me so it's kind of fun to see like all these very different individuals surviving and how they yeah what path they took you know yeah um I thought that another thing that was unique about this that and and I know that this is something that you didn't really like the time jumping was that we got to see the immediate apocalypse mm-hmm. and Like you said, it was like a very insulated view of the world ending because basically the only people who survived are the people who stayed isolated and weren't out like watching the world end, you know, Mm -hmm. because it was like a, I think they said like one in 1000 people survived. We didn't actually see anybody survive the flu. So that was interesting Mm -hmm. because it was like, basically all the introverts are going to (laughs) survive. Interesting. Well, uh, and then if you look at Clark's situation, though, it's also the people who are like, or even, it's hard. Like, I feel like maybe watching the show and reading the book so close together is kind of convoluted in my head. Like, mm-hmm. I'm the the lines are a little blurred. But, yeah, because like, they're very Miranda, different. Like, they're they're similar enough to be like, wait, was that the book or the yeah. show? But they're also very different. Like, especially yeah. like the second half, the story, like the. The, like conflict storyline oh for sure yeah um I don't know I just it's really yeah it's really interesting to see to see who yeah who survived and like how people coped with it you know yeah I have a, I have a question and this isn't really I don't think this is in really any of your questions this is why okay. I want to bring it up so did you like I mean I know Clark in the book or in the show I don't really I didn't really get any vibes from him per se other than maybe like some sort of envy or jealousy in the book but do you think like I know he says that he loves Arthur but do you think like he loves Arthur like loves oh like he was like like in love with him him? well because we I mean we know that I mean we know he has a boyfriend and stuff like that so I mean it's not like a stretch or anything but I had I couldn't tell like was was it a friendship jealousy envy like frustration or was it that Arthur had so many women and he was such a womanizer and he did all these things and he didn't really appreciate anything and everything came easily for him. I mean, in Clark's eyes, right? And yeah. then, but he never loved Clark back. I don't know. I don't know. I, I didn't had a pick up time. on that. I didn't pick up on that. Um, I was, I was just, I, I don't know. I, I might have. That's why. That's why I thought I would ask because. I mean, time, like, so. yeah, I, I didn't. I well, so in the book we do get some of Clark's perspective mm-hmm. they definitely didn't feel like any of Clark's thoughts veered that way towards mm-hmm. Arthur um although he did the thing that I thought was really interesting that the 
I liked Clark way better in the book. That was one of the things I didn't like about the show was how Clark's character changed. They added just a lot of like negative traits to him that he didn't have in the book. But um, I liked that in the book, we got to hear Clark saying like, Arthur, I can't even tell if Arthur is acting. Mm-hmm. Like in our conversations, is he acting? Mm-hmm. Is he playing a role right now? Mm-hmm. And I feel like that in the book that was really great at as at explaining like why their friendship kind of did just like yeah. lost some of its luster um yeah yeah i have to admit i didn't really start thinking about it and questioning that until um elizabeth was stuck in the show in the airport with him and he was like going off and like freaking out mm-hmm. about Ar- arthur and she was kind of just laughing because you know she's been dealing with him for however many years and, mm-hmm. with him and knows what he's like and stuff um but i was just thinking like how much arthur put everyone through and to have clark who really has no i mean yeah they were acting together on stage and stuff but what was the buy-in for him he wasn't married to him he yeah. if he was frustrated with him they didn't have to be friends so like i was just trying to figure out like if he was got so frustrated or if he wasn't sure he, like is this even my friend talking to me is he acting like is he being real i don't know anyways i'm way over thinking it but i was maybe just arthur to like that. hung on to clark as like his like because in the show grounding have, friend yeah because in the show we didn't have v like we had we, we didn't even really have v victoria in the book but we had the book his friend his childhood best friend victoria mm-hmm. who published the letters that he wrote mm-hmm. to her it was like a big betrayal so maybe clark was kind of like a combination of those clark and v like like you said Ar- it was arthur's grounding thing. like mm-hmm. he hung on to him like even beyond the point where it was a healthy relationship because he needed Clark to like feel like a real person still or something yeah because everything else was acting and you know yeah I don't know I don't know either I mean that's what (laughs) I feel like there's a lot of things you can interpret with this book so who knows yeah um yeah I'm trying to think if there's anything else about the like kind of unique take I just felt like it was so like like we said it was so interesting that it was all it wasn't survivalists or it was just like artists and yeah actors and this random group of people with a goalie in a you know airport (laughs) I know right like that's so random um I know I was reading a lot of things afterwards about how a lot of people who are really into Shakespeare and literature they really had a um, they really enjoyed the story. And I think for me, I'm not a Shakespeare fan. So I think that might have also been like, I didn't have any connection to it in that way too. Yeah, I, know- I, I I like have read some Shakespeare plays, but I, yeah. I'm not like super into, I probably haven't. I mean, like I've seen all the Romeo and Juliet because everybody has um, and like Leo. So uh, <laughs> that sounds right. Yeah, I mean, but no, but I like, I, I've read Shakespeare. I've done a lot of projects on Shakespeare. Yeah. I've never been into Shakespeare. I was actually ever. wondering if, and I didn't I have look this Shakespeare up. books and I don't care to read them. I didn't look this up, but I was wondering, is it supposed to be a retelling maybe? I don't know. I, I know um, based on what I read, it's, it's, it is kind of like a, yes, I, I believe so. I mean, this is what, what I was reading based on multiple people's comments, um, if that's what the author intended, I don't know. But what did they? Which one? What did they say it was? Ha- Hamlet. Hamlet. Yeah. Maybe that's why they focused on Hamlet so much in the show. Because mm-hmm. I was like, I don't know. I don't. I never. I mean, read. they talked a lot. I about definitely King never Lear read too, Hamlet. But yeah. Yeah, King Lear is the play that Arthur was in, but they don't ever. The troupe doesn't Acted ever do out, King Lear. Yeah. And I when don't even dies, know anything about King Lear. When he dies, though, there that's what they're playing. That's what they're doing. King Lear. Right? Yeah, that's yeah, the yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. So I don't know that we would need somebody who actually. Yeah. See, and then I think that might be another thing too. Is it's like I'm not a literary person when it comes. Mm-hmm. I mean, like I'm like I. Shakespeare is confusing enough to me. Just watching a show or reading about it, let alone somebody having 17 layers to a novel that works it in. Like I wouldn't get it. <laughs> yeah, it was a very layered book. Yeah. And then with the Station Eleven 
comic. Yeah. It's novel. like a book within a com. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A book and, within and a comic. I feel like a book. the lines from the graphic novel were like some of the most poignant. Well, uh, they were, all, were also repeated a lot, mm-hmm. but it was like in the show, I'm not sure if this was in the, again, I, I'm like you. The like, lines are blurred. I know. Yeah. But the like, I remember damage thing that is said several times. I mean, there were just like a lot of, because they were like recite the prophet's whole thing is that he like recite it's like lines from the comic book Mm -hmm. um it I don't know I thought that that was really interesting I was like I want to read this graphic novel (laughs) did they make it I mean that would be smart they made it for the show I mean yeah so no 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 yeah um okay so how did you feel about the multiple POVs that was one of my questions you already said that it was it was part of what kept you from getting super into it. Um, yeah. How about you, though? So, you like? I it? shockingly didn't mind them, and like I said, it felt like she could anticipate when I wanted to hear something more from another person's perspective. And I wonder if maybe I didn't mind the multiple POVs because we weren't like super in people's heads, um, and so it wasn't the mind jumping or whatever. Yeah, was okay. yeah. I mean, I guess it technically it's third person, so I'd guess it is that still mind jumping. I guess so. I but... don't know. I don't know either. I mean, yeah, I think it depends on like how close you're supposed to be. But um yeah, I think I already said everything that, that I thought about that, but I I just think it's interesting that it didn't bug me and I don't know why. So I have a question. Um in the book, would who do you think is the main character? Um probably Kirsten see I that's also I think another thing is There's in the no, show like, I have character yeah like I have some like people that I can root for I feel like in the in the book like I'm like who I feel like Kirsten is the main character in the show definitely yeah but it okay all of the POVs that we have in the book we have Kirsten we have Jibin we have some Clark. of Arthur we have Arthur we have Miranda we have Miranda is that it? We don't actually have any of Tyler's perspective, and we don't have any of. We have that comp that interview between Ram- Ramon or whatever, whoever, whatever those people are. Oh, the oh, that was interesting. What are their names? Ramon and no, maybe with. He was like Ramon. a French guy. Yeah, and then someone else. Something with a D, and something with an R. No, but there were two other. No, there were two other people too. Oh. I don't know. It wasn't Kristen the whole time, though. Oh. Maybe it wasn't the interview I'm thinking of. Maybe it was something else. Maybe it was... Because it would say, like, oh, were they reading lines, maybe? Because it would be, like, name, this is what they said. Name, this is what they said. I think that was Kirsten. Mm, it wasn't Kristen's name, though. It wasn't Kirsten's name. I don't know. I don't have... I wish I had the paperback. This is one I wish I could go back and, like, flip through it. And was see, it but... Kay Raymond? <laughs> Uh, was it Raymond? That's her last name. No, I know, but I thought it was Ramon or something, but I don't know. I don't, I, I don't know. I don't think I care enough, but anyway, <laughs> never mind. But yeah, so, but as far as main characters, uh, you said Clark, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's all I can think of. Um. Okay, so let's get to the adaptation. Um. So the show made a lot of changes. Yes. Are there any that you really like? Or I feel you like I have probably the case. same opinion <laughs> a lot of people have, which is I loved Kirsten and Jimin together. Yes, um, I know. That was my number one thing. I was like, I'm yeah. so glad that they did this. Yes, because honestly, I think Jimin was my favorite character. Yeah. Hands down. Um, it was like the everyman who's dealing with the apocalypse. He was like, and like, like uh, losing his mind. Yeah, he's like, this is so pretentious reading that fucking I know, comic I loved book. that. I, there's just so many lines and I was just like, <laughs> I love it. Um, and yeah, losing talking to himself. Um, I feel like he had the biggest character arc out of anybody. I mean, he yeah. really did. I mean, he's a fucking doctor by the end. Mm-hmm. Um, I absolutely, I think my favorite episode was him being in the pregnant woman. Yes, I loved that one. Yeah, ward or whatever. And I love that. And uh, his reunion with Kirsten um, had me like teary eyed. Yeah. Which is. I mean, and I was so excited for that because they there's uh, they don't ever other than the very beginning or the very beginning of the end of the world. So and it comes up multiple times throughout the book, but they only meet at the theater. I know, 
I and know. that's it. And I knew, I, I think it confused me too, because I had watched the first few episodes and then I read the book and I kept waiting for them to meet back up. Mm-hmm. I was like, how are they going to get back together? Cause like the show is about them and surviving. Yeah. And I was like, this doesn't make any sense. So spoiler, they are not a team. In yeah. They're in the, the book. book. At all. <laughs> um, no, but I, he was hands down my favorite. So I'm really glad they did that. And I did read last night. Um, I was reading about how, um, they had made those changes to the show with Emily's her first name, right? Um, she, she was from the very beginning, she was like, yeah, you should do that. That would be a great adaptation. So yeah. she was a hundred percent behind it. And I think it's one of those things just like, oh, I mean, it gives me, I would be like, oh, that's such a good idea. I should have done, done that. Yeah. that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I have a feeling it might have been something like that. I mean, I don't know, obviously, yeah. but um, but yeah, I hands down loved it. Yeah, so Jeevan, Jeevan, Jeevan and Kirsten as a team. Yeah. Jeevan is a reluctant parent. <laughs> Poor guy, know, like and Frank, he, and and then, then I know, and then in the show, he's like, she doesn't even like me. <laughs> like he's stuck, he's stuck with this girl who you know has this connection with Frank, even though Jeevan's the one who saved her and has been like essentially sacrificing everything for her since the very beginning yeah. and putting yeah and anyway yeah it's like I said I think he has the biggest growth and I think he's my favorite character for yeah. sure I also really liked the change that they did to the like whole like conflict plot line with Tyler and yeah that was huge. everything I, it was like and... so much happier such a happier ending still still just as like tense I was like oh my god are they actually gonna blow this place up <laughs> but like although I will say I don't feel like he de- necessarily deserves redemption after he had those kids blow themselves up yeah there's a few things that I was like this is really like I think he, he probably sense. should have died at the end <laughs> he should have been killed even in the sh- I mean he dies in the book but he should have been killed in the sh- Show. Yeah, so he, he just gets his mom and he gets to go off on his own and with his do kids his own thing. who he yeah. was like willing to sacrifice like with landmines <laughs> strapped to them i mean yeah. well and then in the the sh- i mean they have him like going and blowing up you know the the golf course that, yeah the golf course i'm sitting there going in the Why? show, I felt like it was very clear to me that he didn't want everyone to go back to before, right? Like, he wanted to get rid of before whatever, you know, because, like, Clark was holding on to before, right? Yeah. And that's why he blew up the whole museum. Mm-hmm. So I don't really get why he wanted to blow up or why he blew up the golf course and all that, um, or at least the guy, what's his name? Um, oh, um. And anyway, yeah, with the kids with the landline and all that, like, I don't really get why he did that because I don't I mean again I feel like I missed I felt like through this whole story I was missing something because maybe it was quite made sense maybe it was was it was he coming after Kirsten because she stabbed him but I don't think so well unless he wanted he was doing all that just so she would chase after him but that's like extreme yeah. Either way, I still feel like you should have died in the end. Yeah, it was all very strange. So yeah, I did feel like it was a lot more complex. I liked the the change though to his like prophet character, um, making him not just like the generic like cult mini wives creepy prophet kind of guy, mm-hmm. and more like fully based off of fully based off of the graphic novel. All children. There was no like creepy wives situation which doesn't actually make sense to me but yeah yeah (laughs) he just has like herds of children i know i know it's very like peter pan but yeah Uh, yeah anyway um are there changes that you did not like to the show um i didn't really understand why they changed the situation with frank's character um like they made him a hair like he had a heroin problem, which that wasn't in the book, right? That was the only he died from pills because he OD yeah, on pills. pills. Um, and he didn't get stabbed. And um he I don't know, that was all kind of strange um to me. I wasn't sure why they did that. 
Yeah. exactly like i don't know what they gained in the show from that um maybe I don't they couldn't it... figure out a reason to have him do a suicide by pills with kirsten there i don't know i don't know either um i mean i guess if they had him stabbed it would help like bolster the whole like always having knives on her maybe um so i mean i guess that could be it um what else yeah, and I thought the 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 changes, some of the changes they made to the Tyler and the Prophet storyline, I thought were kind of, yeah, out there. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I feel like there was a lot of things that just kind of weren't taught, like they weren't really explained or talked about, and um, I don't know, it's just he was just very a very strange character, very amazing acting, but um, yeah, it was really good. Yeah, um, yeah, there, I I didn't really understand Tyler's motivation. I think. I, I don't either. I mean, he went back. I don't know. Yeah. I in the like show. Was, in the show. I didn't understand his motivation. Yeah, I didn't either. And I feel like, well, he went back so he could get his little handheld thing. But to I'm like, blow it up? Like. I, yeah. There's just a lot of things. So. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. But like um, I said, amazing acting. Yeah. I would say that the changes that I disliked were, I didn't like Arthur and Clark's more strained relationship. Um like overtly strange I don't I didn't I don't know it felt unnecessary um and just the general changes to Clark's character mm -hmm. uh, making him more I don't it was weird I didn't understand it like why he was like doing cocaine and <laughs> yeah that's it's another one it's like a Frank thing like why why, why? Yeah. why? yeah yeah and um I, I, will, I would have liked yeah I would have, like, we got, we still got to have Miranda, the Miranda episode. We still got to have, like, the Clark episode. I would have liked to have had the Arthur episode. Like, we got Arthur's perspective at the end of the book, and we got to see more about him. And since he's, like, kind of, like, the, the center point. Connecting yeah, he's more, like, people. sprinkled throughout. Yeah. He doesn't, like, have an episode. Yeah. So, I don't know um so but like you said amazing acting what did you think of the casting I feel like I know what you're gonna say no I thought it was really good yeah. um I thought the um Mackenzie Davis I forget her last name is that Kirsten yeah she did an amazing job um mm -hmm. uh, I mean everybody did an amazing job yeah. I think the casting like even all of them I yeah. think they were absolutely perfect I think Clark did an amazing job I think yeah Elizabeth I mean they all did a the prophet amazing Mm -hmm. um doesn't mean I understood it <laughs> but they did an amazing job yeah um like I said I, I mean I wasn't really invested in the story and I still got teary-eyed at the end so I mean it takes a lot to you know it's good really good um so I think they did a really good job with that I really liked that last scene in the last episode when Jeevan and Kirsten are on the road and then they go their own like that mm -hmm. was super and like oh I'll come back next year we'll make sure we we'll add this to the circle the loop yeah really like that so. And did you notice that Jeevan's kids were named Frank yep. something and Key? And I was like, is that Key for Kiki? Kiki, probably. I was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah, no, I really, um, I, like I said, I loved his character. And I love, my favorite, really, my favorite episode was when he was at all those pregnant yeah. women. I mean, it was just great. Yeah. Uh, but. Yeah. She's like, I don't care if you're a doctor. She's like, like you're a doctor. pretend like it was. Yeah. And I, I love the part when she's like sitting in that armchair. So sort of like drink it out of a vodka bottle. Yeah. And she's explaining to him why she's alive. No, she's a doctor. She's really? like, because I was had my, you know, yeah. medical license revoked, revoked for running yeah. a Ponzi scheme in the hospital. Oh, that's what it was. Yeah. So yeah. I was at home while every other doctor died. Yeah. And I was like, this is so interesting. It really is. You know, really and like is. that they're that explains why like there would be no soldiers there would be you know because they all would have been you know out trying to or organize people and stuff and so they was, all would have gotten sick and died was it in the in the movie or in the book or both when they said it only is like three hours between contracting it and then like dying Getting sick or oh um or maybe it was showing symptoms i can't remember maybe i think that yeah they were just saying like there's like zero incubation period so it's yeah. like you are exposed and you get yeah. sick three hours later and then there's like a 0 0.1 chance of survival 
I really like that it wasn't a zombie. Like I'm, uh, yes. I really like that there was no zombies. I yeah, there was like... no zombies. There was no like, there were the red bandanas. Um, is that only in the show? Yeah, I was gonna say. I think they were only in the show. I can't remember. They allude to her waking up with a guy, guys with a bunch of guns, and I thought maybe it might have been them, like towards the end of the book. But I don't. It never like I, I don't recall it ever saying like the red bandana yeah um Mm. um okay so i feel like i already know what you're gonna say as to answer this but this is just Mm -hmm. a standalone book and a single season Mm -hmm. miniseries do you wish there was more or are you satisfied with it as is so i mean obviously i'm good but um i (laughs) did read that um hbo Ha, is making two more of her books into shows um and they i think there might be in the same world i haven't read oh them, really because i did look up her books to see if any of them but were they're in the same not world. they flat out said they're not like sequels or anything okay. so one of them is i wrote it down the glass hotel and sea of tranquility mm. i haven't read them i could be wrong who knows where i mean i read it on the internet it could be like grossly incorrect but yeah. Um, I did hear that HBO is making them into shows. They are the same author and, um, they are not sequels, but, um, they may, they may be in the same world. I don't know. So there you go. And I guess my answer then would be in saying that I would check them out and see if I liked them. Well, I would say I thought it ended well. It was very like, especially the show. It was just like very nicely wrapped up, like. Yeah, the show definitely. Um, but it, if there was an, another season of the show, I would watch more. And like I said, I looked it up to see if any of her other books were in the same world, and it didn't look like it to me. Yeah, then they probably aren't. They must yeah. just be more of her books. They opted to make into shows, miniseries yeah. for That's HBO. Cool. Yeah. Um. Okay. So, my last question is: Did you have any, or do you have any book, show, or movie recommendations for people who enjoyed? this book slash show so um the very first one that came to mind which i know you're not a fan of was c and it's very different it's a very different world but it's very much like after right it's very after the world ends or whatever so that's one of my i absolutely love that show um but then i started like going in and i was like i feel like i've seen other shows that, Mm -hmm. that are similar to this so then i started kind of researching a little bit and it's funny because the shows that when I was looking it up that it is compared to are shows that I did not keep watching because I oh did that's not interesting. Like them. So um, the leftovers. <laughs> yeah, I remember. I, was, I wasn't sure if you kept watching that. I never watched it. I don't think. Yeah, I watched like probably five or six episodes, and I was like, "This is I, I don't have time for this." Uh, so there was that one, and then Raised by Wolves. I watched three episodes, and I will never ever watch that again that we is watched most, it. one of the most disturbing shows it's I cannot super do it. weird super weird we watched yeah. it we watched both seasons it's so weird it only gets weirder yeah I'm and i can't fan. believe that my husband wanted to continue it but he was like i feel like i'm invested i've got to keep going i need yeah. to find out what's happening and it's like you never really understand it yeah <laughs> it just I, gets weirder I, it's too much for me so um, it, that's why I just thought it was really funny. Um, and then a couple other ones that I actually do want to watch, or at least one other one for sure that I really want to watch is The Stand, which I still haven't seen. Mm, I do want to The see newer that, one. So mm-hmm. I want to, I really want to watch that one. Um, because With Alexander Skarsgård? I didn't know he's in it until I saw the image and I was like, all right, well. Oh, I guess I'm going to watch this. <laughs> <laughs> but I've, I've been wanting to anyway. I really do because a lot of like the Savage North Chronicles is compared to that a lot. So oh, I really? want to, yeah. So I want to. I really want to. I need to watch it slash read the. I don't Isn't it Vampire? The Stand? Is it not Vampire? I don't think so. Maybe not. I think it's just postcard. I, I don't know. I'll let you know eventually. Mm. <laughs> I read it. But anyway, so that is one that is compared to that I would like to. Um, I'm not going to read it, let's be honest, but I will watch the show. Well, I had two shows. I also was like, God, like I feel like there's so many. Like I said, this one is so unique in its mm-hmm. everything. Um, and so I was like, I can't really think of anything that is like, like this, where I'd be like, oh, if you like this, you would like, right. the walking dead. No. Um, I mean, nothing against the walking dead. I, I had to stop after the whole 
brain smushing thing, but you know, um, I would recommend survivors, which is a British viral apocalypse show. I want to say there's only like two seasons. Um, it was, uh, it's gotta be at least a decade old now. Um, it was excellent. Really good ahead of its time. Um, I loved it. And I was so bummed when I like got to the end and I was like, there's no more, it, like got canceled. I mean, it didn't finish. Uh, oh, and that then, sucks. yeah. And then the rain, which is, yes, I saw that on there. Dennis watched that. And I think he liked it. That is I've a great show. It. Great show. Um, and it's not, it's English subtitled, um, like Danish or something like that. Uh, really good. Those okay. were the two. Yeah. 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 So I don't know. I, I have to say, and I know, again, this is one of the issues I had with the book is that there wasn't, I feel like everything was really topical for me. I mean, it was layers, but it, it was like, I didn't feel like I was ever submersed in anything. Mm -hmm. And so, but what I really enjoyed about the show, loved the costumes. Can I just say Oh my that? gosh, like, yes. Yes. So good. Plastic bottles of skirts and like, like gloves is, you know, I mean, yeah. it, was just, it was so yeah. creative. And then how that their carriages for getting around, making them like their yeah. train wagon yes. shit. The like, like whole oh, so smart. like setting world building. Very like, cool. The way that it looked was so cool people looked like dirty and unwashed and like it was you know who knew fanny packs would be so, so useful, useful. Yes. <laughs> i mean the whole time she's like strapped across the i'm yeah. just like oh my god this is awesome yeah so yeah i have to say that was pretty epic. yeah and like the in the like the first year like Kirsten and Jeevan and Frank like their whole outfits like everything there were like sweaters on their heads yeah. I mean they're in Chicago right it's cold <laughs> what do we know what year that's supposed to be mm, I don't know I was like I, now -ish. I don't know that's what, I was just curious because um I mean that's kind of what I was thinking but thinking back on what they were wearing was a lot of it looked almost like 80s like jackets and like bright neon colors and I don't know I was just curious like what what was hmm. it did felt... feel it did feel like the future like 20 years later like the stuff that they had scavenged was from a pre now era but yet when they were like all the phones and they were like yeah. smartphones but it was yeah. yeah it was they did a really interesting conglomeration of a lot of things so yeah and I loved Jeevan's like blanket fort <laughs> when were they lit <laughs> I'm just like oh, poor guy. He's like talking. To I totally sister. thought that was Kirsten's like little uh, blanket mm -hmm. part. Nope, it was Jeevan's. No, mm -hmm. <laughs> hallucinating his dead sister. I have to say, like when he just kind of disappeared, and she found the um, like in the snow, she found the the comic and all that. I've seen her going for two or however many episodes. I was just like, what the f happened to him? Because obviously, yeah. it's not in the book, right? So I was just yeah. like, what? Is he dead? Like, what's going on? So yeah. I was so happy that he woke up and they're all those pregnant women. And I, I know so that ev that episode was awesome. I know. And then we like, got to oh. see like him become a doctor. Yeah, he's like, I'm not even a doctor, but okay. Hey, let's <laughs> deliver some kids <laughs> <laughs> with my hobbly leg and my arm and or gnarled arm or whatever. Oh uh, um, yeah. So. Yeah, so I I'm actually really glad that we had very different takes on it. It makes it more fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does. Anyway, do you have any final thoughts? I don't. I think that. I mean, I was not a fan of either, but <laughs> I also think that I mean this book is a international bestseller for a reason. So if mm. you're interested, you should check it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not super long like so, it <laughs> there's that <laughs> yeah. um okay yeah uh and I would say check it out I thought it was great so yeah for sure. um thanks for listening everyone don't forget to check out the show notes uh for this episode's links and book recommendations and we will be back in a couple weeks to chat about <laughs> oh my goodness gracious here we go everybody <laughs> <laughs> we are going to chat about Ice Planet Barbarians. Oh, wow. That's a fancy cover. Oh, yeah. I haven't seen that one. Fancy cover. Oh, wow. Okay. It is the special edition. Nice. Yeah. The other one's just like sexy photo 
people yeah the blue like purple, alien purple men holding purple sexy men holding a woman or something yeah anyway ice planet barbarians by ruby dixon which is a huge like book talk sensation and uh bookstagram sensation so uh i like there's people who are obsessed with this series so i'm really curious to see what it's all about um, yeah me too i am too. i mean i've never yeah and we'll see i mean i think we did one alien yeah we had alice and ames come on and, yeah we did yeah, a sci-fi I room, and i thought that was really fun so yeah I, so i'm excited to see like what is so swoon swoon worthy about these blue men mm-hmm. exciting they're not little green men they're big blue men burly surly blue yeah. men. i think they maybe have horns too not on this one but i feel like on another cover i've seen them with horns but like this dude's huge Look at them yeah she only goes up to below his shoulder yeah, yeah. the big dude bayo you know what too no <laughs> i mean let's be honest this is gonna be a romance so um romance i believe they are extremely spicy <laughs> Okay, so uh, is it erotica? Like, I don't even know. I haven't looked. I don't know, but it's... Um, it's going to be spicy, everybody, so... They call it a romance. It's a spicy romance. We'll just say that. All right. So well, the next episode is going to be explicit. All right. Um, if you're... Blue Fox <laughs> are going to be involved. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna add an E for this one too. <laughs> Sorry, the heat is really getting to me. I think it's going to my brain. Um, if you're enjoying the show, we would love it if you left us a rating and or a review on iTunes and or anywhere else that accepts ratings or reviews. But honestly, I don't know of any other podcast places that let you rate them. So, oh, maybe like Audible. I don't know. Yeah. Um, don't forget to join the No Shelf Control Facebook group, even though we're terrible about posting in it. We really are trying harder. <laughs> <laughs> i'll get that in my calendar <laughs> um but the link for that is in the show notes and um until next time happy reading about blue aliens happy reading everybody <laughs>